Chapter 5 uh, deals with uh, synchronous sequential circuit. Uh, in this study, uh, first part, we have uh, two objectives. Uh, first, uh, to learn the definition of uh, sequential circuits, especially in contrast with the uh, combination circuit we have studied so far. And then we are going to study the basic operations of uh, SR latch that is the very uh, basic memory element uh, needed uh, for uh, sequential circuit. Sequential circuit in general has uh, two parts. Uh, first part is called combination circuit, which we have studied so far, and another part is called the memory element. Uh, the difference between uh, sequential circuit and then uh, uh, Combination circuit, uh, the critical difference is uh, sequential circuit has uh, something called the memory element. Uh, memory element is uh, where you can store some information. So something you store in the past, uh, you can retrieve it now. So that is a uh, memory element. Uh, and uh, thus, something stored in memory element is called the uh, state of the sequential circuit. Uh, so the sequential circuit in general has external input an external output and the internal to the circuit is uh, some combination circuit part and then a memory part which remembers uh, what had something happened in the past. Sequential circuit is spe uh, specified uh, uh, by a time sequence inputs and outputs internal states. Uh, uh, if you remember the combination circuit, combinational circuit the output is dependent upon only the current input right now. But in the sequential circuits, the outputs are dependent on not only the current input right now, but also something stored inside the system. So we say it's a state, or in other words, it's something happened in the past, it's stored. So output is dependent upon not only the current input right now, but also something happened in the past uh, is a sequential circuit. So something remembered uh, in the system is called the state. Uh, so what will be remembered the next time is dependent upon what is uh, currently applied to the input and uh, what is uh, currently remembered in the system. So in other words, the next state is a function of uh, inputs and present states. We have two types of sequential circuit. The first one is called the synchronous sequential circuit and the other is called the asynchronous one. The difference is uh, synchronous is operating according to the clock ticks uh, while asynchronous sequential circuit do not have a clock and then the output and input can change at any time. So synchronous circuit uh, is a uh, Something like imagine you have a clocks in the system and the clock ticks periodically. The input and the output of the system changes only when the clock ticks. The between two consecutive clock ticks, there is no change at all. That's called the synchronous sequential circuit. A asynchronous is a, there is no clock, so input and output can change at any time. That is called the asynchronous sequential circuit. Uh, apparently, it looks like uh, a, a synchronous circuit is more complicated because it requires additional uh, hardware called a clock. In the meanwhile, asynchronous does not require clock. But actually, for practical use, uh, synchronous circuit is uh, a lot easier and less complicated to design. Why it, it is so, we are going to talk about that in later slides. So in this course, uh, we are focusing on synchronous sequential circuit only, how to analyze and how to design that. We have two kinds of storage elements. One is called the latches, the other is called the flip-flops. The difference is uh, latches uh, are called uh, uh, level-sensitive device. What it means is that the output and the input changes uh, according to the level of the signal. So whether whether level is high or level is low, that depending on that, the system operates. Uh, that is called the latches. Uh. In the meanwhile, flip-flops are called the edge sensitive device. What it means is that uh, there is a clock and then the input and the output of the flip-flops are changing 
only when the clock make transitions either from low to high or high to low. But while the clock is on high or on low, the input and output does not change. So this is called a uh, edge sensitive device, uh, and then that is called the flip flop. So in our course, uh, we are going to use flip flops uh, to design sequential circuits. Uh, but we will begin with uh, the basic operation of latches, uh, and then we will extend the idea to flip flops. Uh, and eventually, we use uh, flip flops only. SR latch is the very primitive uh, memory element, uh, and we can make SR latch with uh, two NOR gates uh, with this kind of configuration. That is, the output of the one gate is fed into the input of the other gate. So we have a cross-coupled uh, line, something like that. The behavior of this SR latch is described uh, in this table. This table is a function table, not a truth table. Truth table is for combination circuit. Function table is for sequential circuit. Uh, let's uh, see how this uh, configuration as SRLH works. Uh, uh, let's begin with uh, S input as 1, and uh, uh, R input as 0, and let's see what happens uh, on this circuit. So S1 is here. The R is zero here. When uh, the lower gate, uh, uh, one of the input is one, and then the OR part of this gate, gate uh, prior to inverter, is always one, regardless of the other uh, input of the OR gate. Uh, and then through the inverter here, the Q not output is zero. Since this line is zero, so the other input of the upper gate is zero as well. Now this OR gate prior to inverter, both inputs are zero, so this OR gate should have a output zero, but because of inverter, the Q output gets one. So the first entry of the function table, when S is one, R is zero, then Q is 1 and the Q naught is a complement of that. So this is called a set state. And let's see what happens uh, if we change the S input from 1 to 0. Uh, of course, uh, the Q input is 1, uh, the, the other input of the lower gate is 1 at this moment. Uh, and since uh, this OR gate uh, one of the input is still one, nothing changes, uh, and the whole circuit do not change at all. So when uh, the second entry of the function table, uh, when, even if uh, the S input changes from one to zero, the output does not change. Now let's change the R input to one. If we change R input to one, uh, this upper gate uh, or part of that because one of the input is one here the or gate becomes one and the, because the inverter the Q becomes a zero and the, since this line is zero so the input of the lower gate changes to zero the both inputs are zero for this or part uh, the output of or is zero and because of the inverter the Q not becomes a 1. So when R is a 1, S is 0, output becomes a 0 and a 1. So here is the th second, a third entry in the table. Now let's change R input from 1 to 0, and then let's see what happens. Uh, prior to that, because the Q0 was 1, so this input should be 1 by now. So we change the R input 1 to 0, but because the other input is still 1, uh, output of the OR gate is still 1, and changes. Uh, and then because of inverter, Q remains 0. And then the lower gate uh, does not change at all. So when we change R input from 1 to 0, the output does not change. So here, from third entry to fourth entry, is described. 
one interesting thing you can notice is that uh, with the same input 0 and 0 for both the S and R we have a 1 as a Q output and then some other case the same input 0 0 the output of a Q is a 0 now it is quite interesting if uh, we have a combinational circuit where the output is dependent upon the current input only then this should never happen the same input 0 and 0 the output should be always uh, either 1 or 0 but in this case uh, with the same input as uh, SNR 0 and 0 sometimes Q is 1 and sometimes Q is 0 which is not allowed in combinational circuit so this is a uh, one of the character characteristics of a sequential circuit so how do we have such sequential circuit the output is dependent upon not only the current input but also what happened in the past called the state so here uh, with the same input 0 0 if uh, the state was a 1 the output becomes a 1 but in the fourth entry the same input 0 0 if uh, state was a 0 then output is a 0 as well so this is a uh, something that output is dependent not only the current input right now but also what happened in the past this is a characteristic of a sequential circuit so SR Leche, we can extend a little bit to have a, a control input. So here, the right-hand part is uh, the basic SR Leche, but before you give input, you have uh, some AND gate or NAND gate uh, so that you can control the input. So enable input is uh, 0, then because of AND gates uh, here, S input and R input does not work. The whole system works only if uh, the enable signal is 1. So we have uh, added uh, some extra circuit to have uh, some control input. D latch is a special case of SR latch where the S input and R inputs are always uh, on the complementary to each other, on the opposite of the value. So uh, we have only one input but still we have a two outputs q and q not so the basic operation of d latch is just a sub cases of sr latch where sr is either one zero or zero one here is the graphic symbols for latches uh, for sr latch uh, take a look at whether you have a small circle in input on output so here uh, the leftmost one uh, we have uh, two outputs, so this is a Q output, and this is called the Q not output, uh, and the not is uh, specified by small circle as inverter there. And then here we have a, a small circle on input side, uh, which means uh, the low level is uh, considered as true value. So here, uh, SR latch with the uh, inverted input we specify as S not and R not uh, latch, and the D latch we have a one input only, which is a subset of SR latch.